this video we talk about our current plant-based lifestyle we go into why we made these changes how certain types of diet could improve not only your energy but your mood your sleep your skin and the list goes on we go through exactly why we made these changes and what we've noticed with a more plant focused diet over the past few months and we give you a few great tips next time you're in the supermarket because just the smallest changes can sometimes make a dramatic difference to not only your lifestyle but the way you feel hello everyone my name's Sajad I'm Aruna and welcome to our channel Millionaire Rules now over the last few years we tried several different tires but our goal was always to hopefully test one of these and then see if it could be incorporated into a long-term lifestyle change and one thing I've definitely learned not only in terms of health but also in terms of business is what you put in determines exactly what you get out and is no different with diet if you're eating complete rubbish then your outputs also going to be very poor so what have we tried over the years well one of the diets that was very popular uh, especially a few years ago was a ketogenic diet atkins or paleo we've tried juicing as well we've tried juicing as well we also tried uh, lower calorie intakes we also tried alternating day by day so one day having a normal amount of calories and the next day reducing to 500 or less we've tried intermittent fasting intermittent fasting as well we've also tried a military diet where you eat certain types of foods on certain days and you restrict yourself to those types of foods and we've done a lot of process of elimination so when I first met Sajad, he had a very bad sugar addiction. Like, when I mean bad, it was horrible. He wanted sweets all the time. He would have to have chocolate three, four times a day. He would have to have sweets after every meal. He would drink juice, soft drinks. What is that thing you mix with water that you guys have here? Squash? Yeah. Yes, he would have squash. Um... And I, I saw where that, that lifestyle came from because when I went to his parents' house, his sisters, his family ate the same way. His mom would always, after every meal, bring us a big tray full of sweets, um, Indian chai, and cookies, and cakes, and fruits, and it was lovely. But if you ate like this on a daily basis, you were bound to expect, your body was going to start to expect that sweet all the time. And what I also noticed was working in medical clinics, I would need a coffee to get me through the clinic, at least one. But then with my coffee, I'd always get a muffin or something sweet. And what I realized later, but both, both of these forces were fighting against each other. One, one was trying to give me more caffeine and more energy. And then the other was actually weighing me down and making me feel more sleepy. So what I would experience every single day was this brain fog, especially in the afternoon, around 1 or 2 p.m. in the afternoon, where I could easily just fall asleep if given the opportunity. And he would sometimes come home and go straight to bed and have an early afternoon nap around 4, sleep until 6, and then wake up and then need to go back to sleep around 11 after he'd had dinner and a snack again. <laughs> so... I noticed when I moved to the UK, when we got married, the food started affecting my body in a way it never had. I don't know if it was just that the food here is made or produced differently um, from Trinidad, but my body started to reject a lot of the foods that I was had grown up accustomed to eating, like chicken, lamb, vegetables, fruits. I couldn't stand the taste of supermarket fruits or vegetables. I found they tasted very chemically and fake, to be quite honest. I didn't like how the food tasted in the UK. And my body was showing that I started to put on weight. My skin started to break out, my hair started to drop. And I just couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong because I was eating the same way I had eaten all my life. The only difference was my environment had changed and the other thing over the last few years as we were slowly learning more and educating ourselves more this was not only through uh, reading various books about the topic but also watching a lot of youtube videos and also watching a lot of netflix documentaries we started to pay more and more attention to what was actually in food 
and the stuff we were eating, you know, the, the, the yogurt pots we were eating, the fruit juices. And we were shocked <laughs> as we began to learn that there were a few ingredients that were in pretty much everything in the supermarket, apart from raw fruits and vegetables. Pretty much everything else in the middle, the 90%, all seemed to contain stuff uh, like a, a decent amount of sugar or fructose syrup. Uh, it would invariably contain salt. And also, for some reason, everything seemed to have milk or skim milk powder in it. Absolutely everything. It was crazy. And from my research, the, the scary part was that, that actually a few of these ingredients were very, very addictive. Studies actually showed that sometimes a sugar addiction can be worse than a cocaine addiction in terms of the effects on the brain. We've all heard the stories about the rat um, in the labs, what they did, and they gave the rats cocaine and sugar, and then they took away the cocaine and they took away the sugar, and then they reintroduced it, and actually the rats preferred the sugar because it had a stronger effect on their brains in terms of, what is it called, dopamine? Yeah, dopamine. Dopamine. Yeah. Um, on their brains than cocaine so and this is something that people are putting in their bodies on in large quantities on a daily basis so what what we had done or probably over the last two three years was slowly cut out things that weren't good for us and that started with obviously very very processed stuff like the most processed types of meat or desserts that those were the first that we actually cut out and this 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 process actually continued slowly slowly to the point where we are actually only really focused on uh, vegetables and qu quite a vegetarian or almost a vegan diet so what sort of things are we uh, now eating aruna so right now i cook a lot so we make i make things like brown rice fried rice with lots of broccoli beans tofu um, I don't eat too much tofu, but Sajad loves tofu now. <laughs> now he loves tofu. Um, we eat lots of sweet potatoes, whole grains, quinoa, uh, whole grain pasta. I get a black bean pasta from our local vegan shop here. What else? I Lots of veggies. I Broccoli we eat almost on a daily basis beans lots of beans i make i we slow cook a lot of beans i love slow cooked beans what else and even sweeter stuff like uh, plantain and the other thing we we've done is i had never heard about this before but aruna had purchased only a few uh, a couple of months ago it was an air fryer something i never heard about before so this machine i think we had actually bought it on amazon actually fries food but just with hot air alone, so no oil necessary at all. And we tried this with various types of potatoes and we tried it with the plantain as well and it tastes absolutely fantastic. Yeah, so in addition to the fact that we basically cut out most, if not all meats, all meats, we've cut out yeah, all meats. Everything, yeah, everything. Yeah, we cut out all meats, all dairy products, um, no eggs as well, no sugar, and the only type of caffeine we have uh, is from teas. We've also cut out, cut down the amount of oil we eat, a lot of oil. So the oils we eat are usually based, I try to get locally produced oils, locally produced meaning either from Europe or the UK, because you should always try to eat what's local to your environment. At least that's my belief. So I get um, grape seed, naturally pressed, cold pressed grape seed oil that's produced in the UK. I also get avocado oils produced in Spain. Um, but I use these a very minimal. So I've learned to saute and fry and broil things without any oil or salt. And I'm still actually enjoying my snacks, but what I've turned to now is quite um, dense and high value chocolates. So something like over 90% cocoa content. And I also still enjoy my popcorn and vegetable chips, which I eat with very fresh freshly made hummus yeah so i've gotten i purchased uh i purchased a lot of um, items to help us with this healthy eating so i've gotten a air popper for the popcorn we get a lot of the vegan well healthy non-fried chips from our vegan shop here so the important part what have we actually noticed and i'll go first so in the last few months of switching to almost completely plant-based now 
I've noticed a dramatic improvement. Firstly, my energy levels. This brain fog, I just don't experience anymore. I almost feel like that was a different person. I don't even know what it feels like to feel sleepy in the daytime. So now I could wake up at half six, seven a.m. in the morning. If I wanted to, I could work right through until 11 in the evening with no issues at all. And the other thing I noticed, and this was a big one for me, is I all, always, I don't know if it's because of the diets or genetic predisposition, I used to have a, a big sensitivity, a major one, to carbohydrates. But now this has flipped completely. And I could be eating carbohydrates all day, obviously good carbohydrates, so not processed. And I wouldn't feel sleepy and I wouldn't feel bloated at all. But this was in contrast to two years ago where just the slightest bit of uh, something like bread or chips or something like this and I would feel incredibly bloated. And the other thing I noticed which was pleasant, I wasn't expecting, was my skin has really cleared up. So from suffering with acne in my teens, I still have some old scarring, especially on the tops of my shoulders. And I noticed slowly, slowly that's completely clearing. And what I realized was these things aren't immediate. It doesn't happen in a few days or even a few weeks. It happens months and months later. And I often think that people don't give these diet and lifestyle changes enough time for it to really take effect and for you to notice the benefit and for you to keep motivated in terms of continuing on something. A lot of the time as humans, we need to see benefit. We need to see some sort of reason or success for us to keep doing that. So what did you notice? Well, like I said, uh, when I moved to the UK three years ago, I started putting on a lot of weight. I went to the doctors. I was diagnosed with uh, a lot of you women. Some of you women will be familiar with PCOS. I had an insulin resistance because of that. It was very difficult for me to lose weight. And I think just generally entering your 30s, your body becomes very sensitive to certain things and your whole metabolism changes and mine slowed down drastically. I had always been a very not heavy person, but I started to put on a lot of weight, which I was not accustomed to. So gradually, as we started changing our diets and reverting to a very natural, unprocessed way of eating, I found that it's all kind of reversed back to the way I was reversed. So I'm not experiencing any sort of insulin resistance. I'm not bloating anymore. Uh, my doctors don't think I have PCOS anymore because um, I don't have any of these symptoms. Uh, my hormones have kind of balanced out. I th this might be TMI for some of you men. <laughs> but yes, it's definitely, I've suffered with acne all my life, like Sajad, and that's definitely cleared up. I have some scarring, but even that's getting less and less. My hair is starting to grow back um, a lot thicker, a lot healthier. And the added benefit of it is I've lost um, a lot of the weight I put on and my energy levels are up and... I cannot tell you how, I never used to enjoy going to the gym. I used to think that working out was a task and something you just had to do to maintain a certain body type. But now, if I miss a session in the gym, I literally feel like my day is empty. I look forward to working out, to expending that energy, to the endorphin rush I get from it. And I have so much energy for that gym session for working out and for then coming home and cooking and working and spending time in the garden with my husband and my dog it's it's a completely different 180 lifestyle that i've had three years ago so just before i talk about the tips don't forget to like this video if you're enjoying the content and also please comment down below what what you've learned not only from this video but from ch any changes you've made because we're always interested to hear we're always educating ourselves we're always trying to learn more as well so finally what we wanted to leave you with is a few tips whatever your situation at the moment whatever you're eating whatever your lifestyle and demands are in terms of time the first tip is there are a lot of myths out there so make sure you educate yourself it's a complete myth that vegetarian or a vegan diet won't give you enough protein or enough vitamins for you to do what you need to do and you'll, you'll suffer a lot of deficiencies. This is complete rubbish. And there's lots and lots of studies out there showing people being followed up with blood tests regularly. They've actually found that those people who are eating a lot of vegetables and beans and things like that, they actually have towards the upper limit of vitamin levels. And I can testify to that personally because I was um, 
three years ago I did blood tests and I was deficient in almost everything and now I've done blood tests literally what three months ago mm -hmm. and my levels are extremely high so I personally can say that that's not true you can definitely have a very sufficient diet on a plant-based vegan diet and I, I remember just listening to all sorts of crap when when I, when I now start to go into the gym it would stuff like you need to bulk up eat lots and lots of ice cream because that's the main way to add on muscle all of this stuff incredibly unhealthy incredible short-term thinking and that's not what you want to do because the, the second tip I have for you is think about the long term small changes you make if you do that over a longer period of time that can have a significant effect on your life however if you do something like a crash diet over a couple of weeks yes you might lose some shed some water weight but that's not going to make no difference to you long term and in fact it'll increase your sensitivity to things like carbohydrates so not only will it not help you you'll actually put that weight back on and more a few weeks down the line the other tip i have for you as well is definitely start checking labels probably over 80 percent of the stuff in the supermarket is complete rubbish and not good for you at all and the other thing I noticed was, I think Aruna would agree with this, your palate changes over time though. It needs 30 or 40 days to adjust. And now that we've started to taste what, we, what I would call real food rather than the processed stuff, my body can't even take in the processed stuff anymore. It just goes in and goes straight back out. With the point on checking labels, don't just look at the nutritional value of a product or something you're buying. Don't just look at the protein, fiber, sodium, and carbohydrate content. Look at the ingredients. If there is something on the ingredient list that you don't know what it is, then you probably shouldn't be <laughs> eating it. That, that's my rule of thumb. If I don't, can't pronounce it, or if I don't know what it is, then I'm not putting it in my body. And I apply that now to almost everything with my makeup, my cleaning products, um, the things we use in the bathrooms. I don't use anything that I don't know what it is or the ingredients are. Also, there's a lot, a lot of information on YouTube, on television, on Netflix and Amazon. There's a whole whoosh of information the vegan diet, the plant-based diet has been so well researched now that if you are interested in finding out more, there's infinite information available to you for free. Um, I'll let Sajad list down below some of the documentaries that I've we've watched together and found to be most um, helpful in our journey to where we are right now. Some of them are bits intense in not for the weak hearted but if you can sit through them and if you can watch them you will not only change your own diet and change your own lifestyle but you will probably be saving thousands of lives so as i say this video wasn't meant to be controversial or to show you what we think is right or wrong in any way it's just to increase awareness of what you're actually putting into your body so i hope you've enjoyed it thank you very much for listening and then we'll see you all next time